26 verse 27. For supreme happiness comes to the yogin whose mind is peaceful, whose passions are at rest, who is stainless and has become one with God. This verse describes why one should bring the wandering mind back and make it steady on the supreme soul. What are the characteristics of a yogi who has attained siddhis, spiritual powers? If you go on the path of yoga, and then what will you get out of it? What are the consequences? The Gita answers these questions in this verse and says that four things will happen to him. The first consequence is that his mind becomes peaceful. By performing meditation, the mind becomes peaceful. This is the first consequence of meditation. The word prashant is used in this verse, and it means peaceful. Prakrusht yes shanta prashant. One whose mind is at peace is peaceful. This is a very important word, because when we go to sleep, then our mind becomes shant, quiet, but not prashant, peaceful. And in reality, when we go to sleep, then the mind carries on running. There are three states of sleep, the awake state, the state of dreaming, and the deep sleep. During the awake state, the mind is always running. The mind does not even rest for a second, let alone a minute. During this state, both the body and the mind are running. Then there is a state of dreaming. During this state, the body is still still, but the mind is running. The state of deep sleep is such that both the body and the mind are still. But this state of deep sleep does not last very long. And when we say that we sleep for seven or eight hours, then psychologists say that we actually sleep for seven to eight hours, but the sound sleep during this time is hardly 40 to 45 minutes. Apart from that, the rest of the seven to eight hours is spent dreaming. This is because dreams are necessary. Recent research has shown that if a person does not dream, then he cannot live and his tiredness will not go away. Dreams are the safety valve in the house of the mind. All the things that you have left to do during the awake state are done in your dreams so that you are at peace. Otherwise, every person will be frustrated. We wanted to do so many things during the day, yet we were not able to do them. One sees a calendar of Switzerland and wishes to go there very much but they're not able to go there. The person goes to sleep one night and visits Switzerland in his dreams. Not a single rupee was spent and no worries at all. And we wish to do so much. All our frustrations come out in our dreams. This is what the latest research in the field of psychology show. And every person has dreams. I wanted to find out about this because I thought that I did not see any dreams, as Guruji says. As soon as I go to bed and then in the second minute I'm out. When I wake up in the morning, then I feel that I've had an extremely sound sleep. But psychologists show them their recent research that there are many people who do not remember their dreams. But dreams do come. There are many people who feel that they do not get any dreams. The reason why not, they do not get any dreams is because they cannot remember them. This is because a person cannot live without dreams. When a person uses equipment to carry out experiments in a lab, then they cannot find out whether we are seeing dreams during our sleep. But dreams are necessary. What happens during that time is that the mind is running. Throughout the seven or eight hours that we are asleep, the mind is running for all that time, but for the 40 to 45 minutes of deep sleep. Our sleep has periodic stages. Very beautiful research has been done on sleep and dreams. Imagine that you've gone to sleep at 10, 10 p.m. There is a cycle that runs every 45 minutes. Therefore, from 10 p.m. to 10.45 p.m., we have dreams or we keep turning sides. Then we get sound sleep for 5 to 10 minutes. After that, something happens again and our dreams start again. Then for the next 45 minutes, we are seeing dreams. Then once again, we get sound sleep for five to ten minutes. This is called Garin Nidra. Then once again, we get dreams for 45 minutes. These cycles of dreaming and deep sleep run throughout our sleep. People fall asleep for 40 minutes thinking that their tiredness has gone away. But in reality, they have just been having dreams. People carried out experiments where they made someone work for 24 hours 
and then make them go to sleep for 40 minutes. They then tell a person to get up because they think that the sound sleep is for 40 minutes. Then the body did not get the seven or eight hours sleep that it needed, but even the mind is tired. We know already that the mind only gets fresh when it has had a sound sleep, then these people's minds should have been fresh after this 40 minute sleep. But this, but this does not actually happen, and that is why these psychologists proved that dreams are necessary for unwinding the mind. Dreams are necessary in order to keep the mind fresh. Our whole night goes in cycles of dreams, sound sleep, dreams, sound sleep, etc. Dreams are critical as they make the mind quiet. Here Sri Krishna says that the mind of a yogi becomes prashant, peaceful. Therefore, even during the awake state, the mind of a yogi is at peace. That is a yogi. A thinker has given us a very beautiful example. He said that dhyan, meditation, is nothing but putting the motor of the mind in neutral gear. When you turn on a motor and give it a gear, then it immediately starts running when you put your foot down on the accelerator. If the engine is on, it is in gear, then it starts running. There is also a state where the engine is turned off, so that no matter what you do to put it on, it will not run. If the engine is on and the car is in gear, then it will remain running. But there is only one state where the engine is turned on, yet the car is still and this is neutral. In the same way, meditation is a process of putting the motor of the mind in neutral gear. The engine represents the body that is running, yet the mind is not running. All the activities of the body are being performed, yet the mind is not running. This is meditation. This makes the yogi's mind peaceful or prashant manasan. This is what a yogi becomes like. Sri Krishna says in this verse that the second consequence is that yogi becomes shantarajasam. His passions are at, are at rest. His mode of passion becomes at rest. All this running around of the mind is because of the mode of passion. Lava purvrutri raramba. All of this happened as a result of the mode of passion. With dhyan, the mode of passion becomes at rest. When the mode of passion becomes at rest, then the wish to enjoy the fruits of karmas reduces. And as a result of this, many other vices of yogis reduce. This is because all of the vices come as a result of the mode of passion. The Gita says this, Rajaso labo ivacha. Greed comes as a result of the mode of passion. Therefore, if the mode of passion comes at rest, then greed also comes at rest. When greed goes away, then cruelty and stinginess also go away. This is because greed, cruelty and stinginess all come hand to hand. If greed goes away, then cruelty and stinginess also go away. The person becomes generous, and when he becomes generous, then he automatically gets the quality of giving done donations. Everything is interconnected. Another consequence of greed is described in the third chapter of the Gita. In verse 36 of the chapter, Arjun had asked Sri Krishna the question, what is a man impelled to commit sin, as if by force, even against his will, O Krishna? And there are many people amongst us like this, not bad people by birth, yet they still make the same mistakes. Arjun asked why this happened. Sri Krishna answered this question in the next verse, verse 37, as follows, Kam esha krodha esh rugan sam bhava. This is craving, this is wrath born of the mode of passion. Therefore, when the mode of passion comes at rest, then desires and cravings become at rest, and wrath and anger become at rest. Therefore, all the vices that come as a result of the mode of passion become at rest by themselves in a yogi's life. And once all these vices become at rest, then sorrows automatically reduce. Sri Krishna gives the reason for this in the 14th chapter of the Gita, in which he describes the mo mode of goodness, passions and dullness in detail. The fruits of mode of passion is sorrow. When the mode of passion becomes at rest, then sorrows reduce. Sri Krishna says that Uttam Sukham, supreme happiness, comes to such yogi. This is the second consequence. 
The third consequence is that yogi becomes akalmasha, stainless. He becomes sinless because no desire, anger or greed are left. The three root causes of sin, as described in chapter 16 verse 21 of the Gita, are lust, anger and greed. When one's mode of passion becomes at rest, then his lust, anger and greed also become at rest and no wrong activities are left in his life and he becomes akalmasha, which is sinless. After he becomes akalmasha, then he becomes Brahma Bhutta, one with God. This is the fourth consequence. Note that the past tense is used, meaning one has become one with God. He becomes the same as Brahman and he becomes Brahman. Such is Yogi. And that is the end of verse 27.